Right now, I'm gonna show you how to remove anything from a photo using Adobe Photoshop. In this particular technique, we're gonna shoot two photos, one with a clean background plate and another one with the object in front to make it really easy to composite. All right, just set up the camera over there. It's in manual focus, so it doesn't switch between the background and everything else. I'm gonna be shooting it in time-lapse, uh, one frame per second, so I'm gonna move pretty slowly and see if I can capture everything. Also, I went for a pretty shallow depth of field, uh, f uh, 3.5, and then I've got the shutter speed set to one two fiftieth of a second, uh, and that way it should freeze motion fairly good. And then I just set the ISO to whatever I needed to get the correct exposure. So, um, you know, let's see how it goes. We're gonna select these two pictures. This one here has the image of the bike and this one's a nice clean background plate. You can see the time lapse right there. So I'm just gonna right click and I'm gonna choose edit in and then go to Photoshop though. We're gonna open it as layers. And here we have two layers. The top layer has me on the bike and the bottom layer. So shooting, you know, one second increments for time lapse worked very nicely to get this uh, here. And it's just so easy to clean this up. Let's get rid of the parts of the bike we don't want. And it's as simple as just selecting that top layer, creating a layer mask. And of course, we'll do color correction at the end. But what I want to do is just grab a brush and we're going to use black as the foreground color. I'm just going to hit the left bracket key, make this brush a little smaller. And the rest of the settings, opacity and flow at 100 is going to work nicely. Now watch this, it's just a matter of painting it away. And this is such a much easier way of doing compositing. So we're just going to paint it away. Now one of the things you're going to have to watch is we're going to get shadows. Now we could keep those shadows if we wanted. In fact, a little bit of shadow is not going to be bad, but we might have to kind of improvise. So let's just go over this side. Let's get rid of the back wheel. And you can see how the shadows are kind of there. In fact, let's get rid of the shadows and we're going to um, fix that in a little bit. So we want to kind of have this floating bike effect. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to zoom in a little bit and I'm just going to just make this brush a little bit smaller. I can see I've got a little bit going on here. Let's hit the X key if you want to bring back some areas and let's do that. So what we're going to do is we're just going to cut off the frame about there. Now you could you know, just get rid of the bike altogether, have the person hovering, you could get rid of the person, just have the bike. There's a lot of things we could do. And I just want to match the softness. Let's just take the hardness all the way down. And let's see where we're at. Need a slightly larger brush. And that should give us a nice soft edge. There we go. In fact, let's just go a little bit smaller. And I think that's going to match. Nice. There we go. And let's just do the same here. We're just going to cut that off. We can round it. Let's get rid of that chain. Definitely don't want that there. And let's do the same thing on the front here. And we'll get rid of these. And see how easy it is to remove everything. Now we could leave those or we could get rid of them. And see how it's just super easy when you get that nice clean, clean background plate. Now I know a lot of people don't do that. They don't shoot the background plate and then the compositing is so much harder than it should be. Now I probably could have gone slightly faster shutter speed. I'm surprised with 250th that we actually got this much uh, blur, but that's okay. Now of course there's always the other option when you know you don't have the background plate and I've got plenty more tutorials on that but for this particular tutorial I think this is going to work quite nicely. And I'm just going to get rid of that cable. Let's get rid of the cable there. I could have left the cable. Actually let's leave the cable there because that that makes sense. All right let's zoom out a little bit. Looking good. Now why don't we add the shadow back in. So we want to put a shadow in there. So I'm going to create a brand new layer. 
and we've got the black brush selected. Let's make it super soft this time. So we're going to click in the top, make sure hardness is all the way down, which it is. Let's make a much larger brush. I'm going to drop this flow down to about 5%. So we want that really low. And then all I need to do is just draw it there. And that's going to give us a pretty close kind of a shadow to what we had before because if you guys remember what the shadow looked like on the original let me do this hit the shift key to hide it see that's what the shadow looks like it's just a little bit just kind of almost looks dirty and that should work it's a little bit high let's bring the opacity down a little bit so we get a bit more of a match it's a very subtle shadow all right there we go and we can see I've got my flying bike now let me just I want to do some color correction. I'm going to take it into camera raw. So I'm going to select all the layers, grab the bottom layer, hold the shift key, select the top layer. Now they're all selected. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to right click and convert this to a smart object. So we're just going to choose convert to smart object. And everything is just going to be pushed into one little smart object. <laughs> all right. And now that we've done that, let's do some adjustments. We're going to choose filter. And we're going to choose camera raw filter. And here we are in camera raw. Why don't we just increase the color, make it just a little bit warmer. There we go. That helps a ton. And let's open up these highlights a little bit. Great. Let's pop the shadows just a touch. And that looks good. Let's increase the exposure. Pop those whites a little bit. Just give it a little bit of vibrance. There we go. Take the saturation down just a little bit because I think I went a little far on that. And I'm just going to breathe on the clarity. And click OK. And you can see how that applies it. So this was a really simple one just so you could kind of see the steps. If you want me to do a more complex one, let me know in the comments underneath. And also if you found this useful, uh, let me know, drop a comment and also let me know what you'd like to see in future tutorials. And by the way, if you're new here, first of all, welcome to the cafe. It's great to have you. Uh, just consider hitting that subscribe button and turn on notifications and you won't miss any videos from me each week. So anyway, guys, if you like this, smash the like button into dust. And don't forget this Thursday, 1 p.m. Pacific time, right here on the YouTube channel at Photoshop Cafe. We've got live from lockdown and fix my photo. I hope to see you live. If not, the replay will be right here on YouTube. And so until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.